Have you heard? Metro by T-Mobile now includes Amazon Prime. Yes, enjoy the best of shopping and entertainment, movies, TV shows, music, free shipping, and much more. All included for just $40 per line for three lines. All on the T-Mobile network. Discover the smarter way. Metro by T-Mobile. That's genius. One offer per account. Offer subject to change. $12.99 per month value. Offer valid for new Amazon Prime members. Metro customers may notice reduced speeds versus some T-Mobile customers. Video at 480p. Capable device required. See store for details and terms and conditions. Welcome to Aquarian Radio at AquarianRadio.com. And I'm your host, Janet Kira Lesson, with my co-host, Dr. Sasha Lesson. And today we are going to talk to Joanne Eady, who is the director of the Alien Cosmic Expo. And the Alien Cosmic Expo is going to be, it runs June 24th to 26th, 2016, in Brantford, Ontario, Canada, and we're flying into Toronto. I guess that's the closest airport. Let me tell you a little bit about Joanne before we start today's show and bring her on. Joanne Eady is a master consulting hypnotist working with weight, stress, smoking, and relationships. She's also a certified instructor with the National Guild of Hypnosis of Hypnotists. Sorry, Joanne has a list of credentials, skills, and techniques, and her business partner, Heather Masters has a list of her own, and together they create a complex environment for help and healing of emotional distress. And she has authored her own book called Exhale Weight and developed her own program for the emotional drivers of weight gain and loss and is a practitioner of the Sheila Granger Virtual Gastic Band for Physical Control to Weight Management. And she is the director. We're going to see, ask her how she got into directing this conference which is coming up soon. Dr. Les, what would you like to say before we bring on Joanne? Well, we're really excited about uh, this conference because it focuses on the experiencer and how the experiences of experiencers can help both them and humanity. Welcome to our show, Joanne. Well, Thanks hello, for today. Janet and Sasha. We finally speak in person. We've been emailing for months it's so nice yes. to talk to you in live. It is. It's super nice to talk to you. And I am so excited about this conference. Would you like to tell our listeners, how did you go from being a hypnotist, a hypnotherapist, <laughs> to a cosmic expo, I an know. alien cosmic expo, um, producer, director, whatever you yeah. are, director? Well, first of all, my friend from Arizona, Sandy Mack, who's a a dowser and and a long, long time friend, and she she always says to me, well, Joanne, you know you're from another planet. (laughs) And that's kind of how she talks. Aren't we all? (laughs) But um, I I am, I was always a stay-at-home mom. I raised five kids. And as my youngest went off to university, I sat and meditated on what the next step in my life would be, and and it all began to unfold, and I I was doing EFT, and I added hypnosis, and I was seeing clients and and just uh, enjoying my beautiful slice of heaven, which is a horse farm I live on. And... uh, when then I decided to begin, I, I really kind of noticed that most of my training past my basic hypnosis had taken um, part or had uh, been held in the in the United States or beyond, and so I saw a, a lack of of multiple workshops in Canada. So I began the Canadian Hypnosis Conference, and. Um, during the first two years, we had a speaker, Leslie Mitchell Clark, who works with experiencers, and this is the bulk of her practice. Now, I don't work with experiencers because I haven't been trained, and as you know, because I know both of you do, 
it is a specialty, and you have to know how to guide them, how to, without leading, how to ask the right questions and and help them with their memories that are sometimes fragmented. And they're blocked. <laughs> right. You know, that's the other level. They're intentionally blocked by ET who uh, does not want them to remember for either their own good or for their agenda. Well, not just by the ETs, but by the protective uh, voices that see where a person's place in, is in society and how they might uh, accrue sanctions if they speak in the wrong place. Right. All the above. And so that's how the Alien Cosmic Expo was born from the Canadian Hypnosis Conference. As we talked more, we realized that there um, was once again a void in Canada of these types of events. There's many, many in the United States that you can attend for the weekend and learn more about it or, or you know, hear, hear the uh, speakers. And the first year, you know, we just were good event planners. We really don't know this topic inside and out. But I am divinely guided I, I tell everybody this because we ended up with the first year last year with 24 world-renowned speakers. I mean, just wow. the cream of the crop. And the fact that, you know, they all said yes and, and came and and trusted me, you know, because it had, you know, they would ask, is it, well, how many years have you been running? Well, this is our first year. But they, um, wow. it ended up just a wonderful time. It was small but mighty. And so mm-hmm. we built upon that this year. But I particularly wanted to um, focus on the experiencers this year. Now, people will say, well, why Brantford, Ontario, Canada? We're a, a small <laughs> city of about 100,000. And mm-hmm. we are about an hour away from the Toronto Airport or Toronto. And... Um, <clears throat> The reason is because Brantford is actually a hotbed of sightings. There, there have been many, many sightings and incidences in Brantford, and we have the Six Nations Reserve just outside of Brantford, and they're well known for calling in the sky people. Mm. So it, it's not as foreign or, or odd as you might think. And, uh, we, you know, it's so much nicer than being in the big city of Toronto where parking is expensive and hotels are expensive. And, um, you know, we're, we're in a smaller city where we're mm-hmm. right off the highway and there's free parking and the hotel rooms are quite reasonable. And, and um, so we're, we're looking forward to our second year and, and we're so looking forward to you and, and Dr. Lesson coming. Well, we're so excited to come, and I understand what you mean. It's cheap. You get a much better venue, cheaper, and better rates for your um, guests and, and presenters and everything when you go a little bit away from a major airport. And it's you know not that uh, how far away is it? An, an, an hour. hour? Or one hour away is not that unreasonable uh, for people to get there. So I'm sure you're going to fill up, and we're very excited that you decided to do it. In Canada, you know, there aren't enough of these events anywhere in the world right now. We need to get more exposure for uh, the two major categories that you're talking about, which is experiencers and disclosure. And I think disclosure, the experiencers are disclosure. You know, that's my theory, my idea. Yeah. My concept. And you actually have the uh, ex-Defense uh, Ministry of Canada, Dr. Uh, Elliot, uh, who's been a major, major uh, informant about what's really going on, and I see he's going to be one of the stars of this conference. Absolutely, and he was last year, and and what a gentleman he is. And for anybody out there who, um, now most Canadians know him because he was in our government for so long, and um, uh, but anybody coming, he's in his early 90s, sharp as a tack, and uh, he is just an amazing speaker and a fine, fine gentleman. That's wonderful. I'm glad he's in his 90s and is still able to get up there and do this. That shows you something there. This work yeah. is good for the soul. Yes. And uh, he he's going to be having, he's uh, involved in the disclosure hearings, but also then after we'll be speaking on, you know, um, 
his his newest book and the um, the money and the banks banking industry and et cetera et cetera. Oh, that would be interesting because I'm getting a lot of uh, emails and I haven't had a chance to investigate it, that there's something going on with the banks and the uh, the uh, reconstruction of our monetary system this week that I haven't been able to really um, listen, have the time to sit and listen to everything that's going on. So by then we might have a whole new world if what is coming down happens. <laughs> but we don't know. Anyway, exciting <laughs> that's times. True. That's true. It is exciting times. You know, we have some uncertainty, but we also have some very exciting uh, things coming up, and it always is, is interesting to watch things unfold. We're actually having quite a kick watching your um, presidential race. Oh, um, I, it's not a kick for us. It's, 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 it's torturous because it's, the insiders uh, control well, we're our able conference to look in a way that they will. Yeah. We're we're able to look from the outside, and it doesn't, you know, um, we don't have to go to the polls and actually vote somebody in. So, um, good luck with it all, and and uh, I'm sure you know what it always works out for the best. It it I always say that about what I do. It it, it always seems to work out for me. I sure hope so. The planet needs it to work out. However, oh, from, Trudeau. Oh, after from our from, <laughs> from a it, it feels it, the analogy that I get it's like uh, what Germany must have been like before Hitler got into power, you know, and it's like there's some people that just bought the the Kool Aid and the other people are going what what you yeah. can't do that no 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 so don't well, blame it on all Americans there's a lot of us saying no 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 no. Uh, but yeah. I, I think it, if you get to the top of the of the all C I pyramid, that this isn't really anything to do with, about the United States of America. It is a global issue, and that is becoming more and more apparent as we polarize with the, the things like the the U.S. election, which is um, verging on absurd. It's just absurd, in my opinion. That's my humble opinion. Right. What's going but on? But you know, I yeah. think that um, if you go back in history. I think that the governments, uh, the the people who have been higher up in the governments that have always had secret information that we weren't privy to. Um, yes. I think that they followed their own agendas a lot of the times. I feel that there is um, a a power where the heads of state, like our prime minister and and your president, and and presidents of all countries, are sort of not puppets. But they are—they are not the ones who are truly running everything. I don't feel anyway. Only oh, my I, opinion. I agree. I, I, I agree. Well, we've had evidence. Go ahead. You want to talk, and then I'll talk. Go ahead. Go ahead, Jen. Okay. We have evidence. Um, you know, kind of like testimonial evidence, but we have whistleblowers that come to us all the time. Well, not only are we sure. researchers on the Anunnaki, and the Anunnaki appear to be. The uh, the top of the of the dung heap there, on the, you know, the top of the pyramid, the, the all-seeing eye, uh, going back 450,000 years ago. But uh, we have whistleblowers. So on New Year's Day, we get a call from uh, Dave Schmidt, and he he comes to our house, and he says, uh, the, the the white dragon, uh, there's this whole ambassador, white dragon, red dragon, dragon society, which is apparently is some uh, either the top, or it's one rung under the um, you know, the Anunnaki, but above the Cabal of Illuminati. So anyway, this guy's coming to our house. He's telling us all this stuff <laughs> on, on New Year's Day. And I said, honey, we're going to have a wild and crazy year. This is how it's yeah. starting out, <laughs> New Year's Day 2016. And, it, and he right. said that the ambassador or, or the ambassador and the white train, they're reading our books on the Anunnaki, right? Uh-huh. Like, okay. So this the, the, the head of this Chinese thing is like uh, got hold of billions and billions and billions of dollars, trillions of dollars is uh, on top of that monetary base of the whole planet is reading our books. Okay, here we go. So that is nice. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, that that is really fascinating. Yeah, that, um, and I think it, you know, it doesn't seem to, the internet has opened up a whole new world so that a lot of us know a lot more than we used to. I'm not sure if it's better to know more or better to be ignorant. 
Um, but uh, <laughs> we <laughs> we live in the world where we do we do know more, and you you can't go into that fear mode. You have to just um, you know 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 the information, file it away, and live your life, and send that love out everywhere. And I think that's what protects you. And and that is exactly uh, the information coming in this week, that we are totally in control of the reconstruction of our DNA, creating our own environment, our own world. The Russians apparently uh, didn't believe the theory that the 256 strands of DNA that the regular scientists are calling junk, they didn't believe that they are junk. They just said nature would make that kind of mistake. And they started researching it the last few years. And there's an incredible article, I'll have to pull it up on our website, about how what the New Age people have been saying, that we uh, thoughts are deeds and we create our own reality, you know, going all the way back to Edgar Cayce. Um, they've, they've shown it. So if, if you find yourself, like you just said, having negative thoughts or going into fears, uh, just uh, change the, the channel or switch lanes in your highway when, uh, that you're driving down, but however you envision it, and uh, change the words that are coming out of your own mouth and the thoughts from your consciousness to ones of love and, uh, you know, just That's loving right. your, and then, your enemy, so to speak, and your neighbor. Yeah, and absolutely. And then you can say, everything works out for me. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, well, a good example is on Friday, we had the Experiencer Day, but Friday night we were showing Jennifer Stein's um, movie um, mm-hmm. about the the Travis Walton's uh, Travis the true story of Travis Walton one man's survival after a terrifying journey now the the earlier movie um she feels that this this is a better um tells more truth and isn't quite so hollywood mm-hmm. so Jennifer was coming to introduce her documentary. We are having a dinner Friday night, and uh, then we're going to have a movie. And she was going to be introducing her documentary movie, and um, all of a sudden she got an invitation to a family wedding. And I know what that's like when when you're saying, gosh, I've got this commitment, but I've got this family wedding, and, and you're torn. And so oh. she she felt that she really needed to attend, and I agreed. And um, in in place of Jennifer, guess what? We got Travis Walton. So everything. Oh, my God. oh. we got Travis <laughs> Walton coming in person. He'll be introducing the movie, and he'll be working uh, or or attending the Experiencer Day as well. And so all this can be found on www.aliencosmicexpo.com. Now, we had one speaker, and I won't tell you what his name is, but he's a speaker this year, and he doesn't like the word alien. And so Mm -hmm. he was telling um, one of the other um, board advisory members, I have a board that, that helps me with some of the details. And he was telling, and he goes, why did, why did she name it Alien? And so I, I told this board member, I said, well, do you want to know the truth? I said, we wanted an acronym that we could, we could just slice down and nickname ACE. So we needed mm-hmm. an A word. So it's Alien Cosmic Expo, ACE. <laughs> <laughs> and he laughed and laughed and laughed. He says, I can't wait to tell him because, you know, there wasn't – it." It just we wanted to have make sure the name portrayed sort of what the weekend's about, but also we mm-hmm. wanted to uh, have this lovely uh, nickname Ace. So uh, go to aliencosmicexpo.com and you can read all about the speakers. Um, my assistant Devin has just done a wonderful job on the speaker page, and so when you go to the speaker page, it brings up everybody's picture. You can click on every picture and go to their their complete write up and um yeah it's uh it's a great job she did and you can get all the information on each and every one of them um you know the experiencer day who should come well anybody who thinks they've seen any a ufo had some sort of experience heard something felt something seen something 
you know, come and tell your story in a non-judgmental, uh, safe environment where somebody's not going to tell you you're crazy. Somebody's not going to tell you don't talk about that. And and well, Janet and Sasha Lesson will be there mm-hmm. heading this day up. Uh, because they're very experienced with this topic and they'll be able to um, guide everybody and if somebody's having difficulty, they'll be able to work with them. Uh, We had actually, this is interesting, Janet, we had a set of twins come into the um, Alien Cosmic Expo last year Mm -hmm. and one approached us and and he, he said, my brother and I had an experience when we were eight or, I think it was eight years old, eight or nine. And he said, mm-hmm. we were playing in a playground with a bunch of other boys and we were supposed to be home for supper time. So as time got late in the afternoon, they jumped on their bikes and away they went. And uh, it was then nine o'clock when they next had any recollection. Their parents oh were looking for them. They'd missed dinner. They actually got in trouble when they got home because they'd missed dinner and and given their parents such a scare. And they actually had an experience where they lost about four hours and they actually were taken into a spaceship. Now, the one twin wanted to talk about it. It, This was now 30, 30 some odd years have passed. And they were getting messages that they were to wait over 30 years before talking about this. And um, Mm -hmm. so now it's time. And um, so they, uh, the one twin wants to talk and the other is telling him, no, don't say anything. And he doesn't want to talk. So is that a usual thing? Um, Yeah, yes, it certainly is. What what happens is that... uh, when our vulnerabilities are uh, threatened and uh, we develop ways of protecting ourselves, and one of them is to keep certain experiences that you are afraid are going to give you some kind of punishment or ridicule to yourself. And um, I want to say about alien, what we really mean by uh, what we're open to is things that people call dimensional uh, contact, contact with uh, uh, uh Consciousnesses that are from beneath the earth or inside the earth, things that people call ghosts. There's time travelers, uh, both the, uh, your own uh, time traveling and the travel of others. There's past life remembrances, uh, uh, visionary dreams and visions, all these sorts of what we would call paranormal experiences. Um, that, uh, near-death experiences certainly do, uh, give you this sort of thing, great visions. All of these things that are outside of ordinary consciousness have the keys to way, way higher understanding if we let ourselves experience them. But it has to be in respect to the parts of us that say, don't do so, expose so much that you will be overwhelmed or that other people will punish you. And so what we hope to do in this conference is to, here's an atmosphere where you can explore your experience in your own metaphors, in your own way of seeing things without being punished. One of uh, my colleagues, Ray Hernandez and his wife, had a, an experience where they had an old dying dog spending its last night, and uh, there was a noise downstairs, and the wife goes down, and she sees an angel and the Virgin Mary healing the dog, and he sees um, a plasma uh, bubbles, and the dog gets up and runs around as is happy. So here's two intelligent adult people uh, experiencing the same phenomenon, but symboling it entirely differently. Which one's right? It doesn't matter. When you're into somebody's phenomenology, the way they perceive things, just take it in that, allow yourself to have your own symbols, your own way of remembering there isn't any right or wrong. Let's just hear it. Let's just work it out. And if there's any unfinished elements, we can expand them. We know how to uh, expand the experience in a way that's safe for you but doesn't overwhelm you because we allow the defensive parts of you to say, that's enough, sweetheart. Don't go any deeper at this time. And that's critical. Right, and oh, I want that, to address that wonderful. phenomenon. I wanted to address, and then back to you, Joanne. Uh, we were interviewing Kathleen Turner, Kathleen Martin, Martin and uh, Denise Stoner on our show on Tuesday, and 
uh, Denise was uh, taken with her husband and daughter and the dog. And the, Denise had all these uh, recollections that were on the surface, and then Kathleen regressed her, and a lot more came out. They, the husband had a, like a surface uh, memory, and when she regressed him, he wouldn't go there. Uh, and we didn't get to see what, the, what happened to the child. It was so great if we could have regressed the dog. But anyway, all there were four um, <laughs> beings that were taken, and they have the same thing missing, extreme missing time. And uh, just one more thing, and then back Sasha's wanting to say something. Um, in my family, my grandmother came and told us about her experience in 1964, she had a bunch of the grandchildren, and she and I was one of them. And she, she couldn't tell her husband, she couldn't tell any of the, her friends or, or family in her generation. But she told us, and a month later she died. And now I know that my brother and sister and I have all had paranormal experiences. My brother became a, an Anunnaki ufologist researcher. And I suspect, like, Steve Bassett is a major experiencer. But he keeps saying, oh, no, I'm just interested in the research. So some of them can't <laughs> go there because of that ridicule factor that you get once you – I mean, becoming uh, coming out as an experiencer, you're really exposing yourself to a lot of stuff from a lot of people. I have lost friends. Right. I've lost family. I'm yeah. totally isolated. And you just have to – you know, I don't give a damn after a while. You just say, the truth must be told. At all expense, even my expense, I need to say this. So, so that's okay. My brother stays in the researcher mold. Steve Bassett stays in the researcher mold. My sister has become extremely Christian, right? So she rebelled against it, and she's going into the conventional religion. And for years we thought about it. Now, because I have a high sense of logic, she's able to understand it. And now because of, you know, that's the ancient alien show, They've done a wonderful job for our world, opening up, and then the internet and YouTube. So it's becoming undeniable. But uh, and then these conferences and everything that's going on, we are doing this in mass. We have to. Well, anyway, that back to Sasha, and then back to you, Joanne. So uh, mm-hmm. the part that you may think of as, as, as if you've had experiences as defensive, the part that says, "Don't talk about that," or "Dismiss that," or "It's just a just just a dream. It's not true." That's a very important part. Instead of dissing that part, we, we pay attention to it, and we say defensive part, uh, how did you uh, come into her life? How have you served her? What are your interests now? And defensive part, we want you to know that no matter uh, what's happening, you can always interrupt the process. Uh, we respect you profoundly, and after this experience is over, we're going to have your whole person center themselves so they can feel you, defensive part, and then the uh, other part, which we call the contact door. People, we find, have a contact door. Even though they may think that they've been uh, taken against their will, uh, often you'll find if you go work with them long enough or they uh, regress to a past life experience that they have made an agreement, I wish this contact, I wish it uh, to serve myself and humanity. And right now we have a lot of people that are waking up and they have a need to tell so we, we need to create something where people can tell their stories. So back to you, Joanne. Well, and that's where I, I feel, as I said before, I'm always divinely guided because we began this last year, and I think because of the twins coming in, um, and now they didn't stay long, and I dearly hope they come this year, um, but, but just because of them. And also when we were putting the first one together last year, we would phone for simple things like wristbands or, or name tags or, uh, you know, pens or, you know, just contacting a company for something we were going to buy for the, for the, for the expo. And so we would be talking to the person and, and we'd, she'd say, oh, he or she would say, okay, so what's this for? And we would say Alien Cosmic Expo. Oh, what's that? And we'd quickly tell them. And, and inevitably they would say, their voice would get quiet and they would say, I've had an experience. I've, I've seen a UFO. We couldn't believe how many times it happened to us on the phone. And so wow. this is why we turned the Friday this year into, well, and most of the expo into, 
you know, focusing on experiencers, as I think, Janet, you just said it, you know, it, it's time for them to to be able to tell their story and, uh, in, a, and in a safe, non-judgmental environment. But mm-hmm. they, you know, I, I find, I do, as I said, I am not trained in this yet. <laughs> um, well, and I, we'll but I, I am <laughs> gathering information about them. And um, I know that, you know, they have a lot of fears, anxiety, sleeplessness, um, demons. Like just when I say demons, I don't mean that mm-hmm. in the physical sense. I mean that, that something tortures them whether it's the mm-hmm. experience or whether it's they're questioning themselves or, or what it is, but it, it, it bothers them. So I just find it a fascinating topic. I think that there's a real need for them to have a, a, their own day and their own place. And, uh, and, the, and then the whole expo is a place where people can go and talk about this topic um, with other people who are like-minded. Because there's mm-hmm. many people who say, I've had an interest in this for 20 years. I have nobody to talk to. Nobody in my family wants me to hear about it. And so um, it really does fill a void. And I, I want to say one thing, and I'll pass it to you, Dr. Listen, I'm sorry. He, we're both wanting to talk. We're so excited. <laughs> I I, as you're speaking, and you understand this uh, on a level uh, that is so profound, one of the things that I've been wanting to have happen that we do as a group, as a, a contact experience or group, is to create an immersion process, like a week-long retreat where we're in a place where we can go deep into our processes and witness each other's story on a profound level, like under hypnosis, and we all get the pieces. And as we get the pieces, we're going to start getting more of the pieces and putting it together like a group gestalt, and here's the overview, and here's the picture, and here's all the pieces. Um, I want to talk to you that, about that in person, but I keep seeing it all in some kind of retreat center, like in the summer, and it's warm and nice, and, um, you know, in, the, in between we can go sit in a hot tub and get massages, but we're doing a process where we go into a deep healing for everybody gathered, um, and those people will come out, at another level, they'll be healed, and conscious, center, and aware, and able to speak about it and um, convey their message that they have, which is being blocked because of the trauma, which is, um, you know, these people are suffering from PTSD. We just have to face it. It's PTSD. And we need to address right. that. And that is because they're in one world, which is this conventional Judeo-Christian Muslim society, which has its parameters and what's right, wrong, and what's insane, and so for them to come out in this world, they're deemed insane. And, and when you do that, you get all these judgments and you lose things like right livelihood and, and friends and family. So anyway, that's something on the table. Dr. Lesson, what would you like to say? Well, I like your idea, Jan, of course, because when you have a, the a depth of time, you can trace the resonances of this experience, any experience that you um, have with a client or that they've had with, with uh, a, an alien or extraterrestrial will have resonances in the way they react to it in their childhood and in their past life imagery. And we can get all that and clean out uh, all the uh, many aspects, ways of looking at the thing that uh, each person's subpersonality has. Uh, And I would like to say that our whole society suffers from pluralistic ignorance. The uh, contact phenomenon is so huge and so widespread Uh, and yet people on the surface uh, deny it. Stanley Schachter did these studies in a a small Midwestern American town of um, uh, people uh, that thought playing cards was was evil and satanic, Uh, but they all played cards. They loved to play cards at home, and so Schachter got the minister to play cards with them, and then everybody started having fun and having card games in church and everything. Well, I think it's like that with pluralistic ignorance. I think the uh, contactees are, are the new black, so to speak, the outcast. And, and the kind of conference that you're providing, uh, Joanne, is uh, the opportunity for us to uh, realize that we're not alone, that there's lots of us, maybe most of us humans are in contact with more than just the everyday mundane. I agree that you, you just say it so, 
you lay it all out. <laughs> I, I've certainly chosen the right people to head this day up. I And once again, I didn't know either one of you before. Well, you, um, we, we emailed a little bit w- around the first one, but we uh, didn't have any room to have you speak at that one. Mm-hmm. And, and we've emailed a lot, but I just, you know, that once again, divinely guided as to who I have chosen to be at this year's Alien Cosmic Expo. And another oh. aspect of uh, Alien Cosmic Expo is our exhibitors. Now, last mm. year, <laughs> we have a show within a show because our exhibitors are all metaphysical uh, psychic readers, channelers, mediums, um, you know, beautiful items for sale, crystals. Um, there's a lot, both last year and this year, we've had two different fellas. We've had people with the copper pyramids. And I know mm-hmm. last year the people were lined up to do um, – the copper pyramid last year because it, of the the effectiveness of the treatment that he he offered and um, you know it just it, there's healers there's aura pictures there's um, you know just a, a wide variety of wonderful vendors and that part is free to the public if they just you know if you live in the Brantford area surrounding area and you just want to come and and visit all the exhibitors it's a show in itself. But then we'd like you to I buy know. some presentations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it's very important for uh, the exhibitors. That, you know, they, they a lot of exhibitors are basically the, the 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 seed money to finance these conferences. And so I really encourage people uh, when they come, you know, to do both to come in and check out the presentations and do stop in. I see that you have uh, time over lunch and before. I don't know. I, I have to look at the, oh, the calendar sure. here. Yeah. Uh, the time for people to go and uh, and do a lot of a lot of the presenters. I remember for years, Steve Bassett sat in the exhibitor room for years, and it's like, oh, Steve, why aren't you on stage? And he paid his dues. He was there, but he was talking to people yeah. for years. And Grant Cameron, Grant Cameron, they would just. They, I said, you should be up there speaking. And they said, well, we will. And they eventually, you know, this was at the International UFO Congress, which is the longest running, um, you know, UFO conference yeah. in existence right now. And so, so if you go over to the exhibitor room, people, you're going to run into people that are, you know, probably have been presenters or are going to be up next. Because every year well, we all the try speakers to do this. Have- all, just about all every speaker has an ex- exhibitor table as well, and that was one of the most positive comments we got last year was that the speakers were so accessible to the public that um, you could walk up to their table, buy their book or their DVD, but also they would sign it, they would talk to them, they they could ask questions. Uh, they that was the biggest I felt the best compliment of the weekend was how much the people enjoyed all the speakers' um, accessibility. And that's what we love, too. You know, come up and talk to us. Ask questions. You know, we, we love to share. Yeah, find with, out what that's, we That's do. what's yeah. so exciting. Yeah, it's exciting yeah. to share with people. They're, they're the juice. They're what runs these conferences because without you, the people that come, they're, you know, we can't have these conferences. So tell That's us about right. the uh, presenters and what they're going to be uh, talking about. Well, um, first of all, the, uh, we, as I said, uh, Friday is, is dedicated to the experiencers. And Grant Cameron is one of the people listed, Sherry Wild, Sasha and Janet Lesson, of course, Joanna L. Ross, Barry Strom, uh, O.C., who is an experiencer herself, Travis Walton, uh, who is, and Elizabeth April. And um, But Grant Cameron, interestingly enough, in Winnipeg, he began a, uh, a group, or I, I'm not sure whether he began it or, or one of his associates, you know, one of the people that he mm-hmm. you know, was with, but it, w- it doesn't really matter. That group grew to over 100 people very, very quickly wow. in Winnipeg. That's I mean, this, yeah. You know, Winnipeg's a big city, but it's it is in the west, and it's 
it's not a hugely populated area. But uh, mm-hmm. that's just uh, so. Then Friday night we have the dinner, and um, and Travis Walton will speak briefly, and then introduce the movie, and we'll watch the movie. And then Saturday we have the um, the hearings, uh, the ET disclosure hearings, and and th- we will have reporters there asking questions of uh, Grant Cameron, Stanton Friedman, Nick Pope, Stephen Bassett, Richard Dolan, and Travis Walton. And um, wow. Yeah, and then uh, a quick lunch, and um, then after lunch, the hearing resumes with banking and financial reform with Paul Hellyer, and then Stanton Friedman will be speaking on Operation Majestic, and then we break into three rooms where we have different topics. You need to go to the website, click on Schedule, and you can read their topics if you click on um, if you go to the speaker page and click on their picture, you can read their bio plus their their description of their topic. It it's um, all on the website and and you can find all the information you need. If you can't find it, you can email me. Mhm. And your email is? Uh, it's once again on the, it's on the page. Contact us, but it's uh, all mm-hmm. small letters. My name Joanne J O A N N E at poweroffreedom.ca. Excellent. Yes, it's a very nice schedule. Yeah, well uh, it's easy to read. I'm excited. I, I'm going to be there in the audience <laughs> um, whenever I can because this is well. You are also to presenting what you're doing here. Yes, but you you We're also have on... uh, three different topics throughout the weekend. Mm-hmm. Or, or you're working three different times. So, but yes, the rest yes. of the time you'll either be at your table or, or watching somebody else, or, or whatever. Well, we'll run to. Um, yeah, I'm looking at schedule. We'll run to the, the room. <laughs> you know, everybody's going to be in there watching the disclosure hearing. I'm just looking at the. I'm looking at Saturday, and it's so exciting what you have here. That it up. is. Um, and we you have know, tickets we have to for get a brown sale. bag lunch or something. Yeah. <laughs> well, there is Go a ahead. restaurant right in the hotel, and uh, they good. they know that we need to be in and out quickly, and so they get things. There's a lovely buffet, and it it's uh, very fresh, and they get everything ready very quickly. Um, another mm-hmm. thing is um, uh, you can buy tickets by the day, by the you can buy the whole conference. And right now, for the month of April, it's $225 plus our tax, which we can never get away with. Um, But Mm -hmm. um, (laughs) it's going up $25 a month. We began with just $200, and now it's $225. So get your tickets early so that, you know, you you get in on the savings. At the end of April, it'll be going up. But what's exciting is if you want to hear uh, some of these speakers, Janet and Sasha are are interviewing most of them in the next few weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, Well, you can't do it all at once. But anyway, you will find uh, some of these people absolutely fascinating to hear them on, on their show so that, um, you know, you get a kind of a smattering of what they're all about. Right. So that's AquarianRadio.com. And the schedule is on calendars. And go and click on that. I have a very full next two or three months here until the conference. So, uh, but I'm excited. I'm very happy to interview everybody and get this information out there. Because this is disclosure. We are we are disclosure. Yeah, in case uh, the, uh, some of the listeners don't know, uh, Travis Walton uh, 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 was uh, with a bunch of loggers when he was a young guy, and uh, he came run ran and uh, came to touch a uh, a um, round wing craft that had uh, landed, and he was knocked out. He came to on the craft. He they treated him really well. He evidently had been injured. And they uh, left him in a way that he'd be sure to be found, and they took good care of him. But in the meantime, he found out all kinds of things. And what we're left with is not the Hollywood version uh, where he was accused, his colleagues were accused of murdering him because he had disappeared, but his version, what really happened and how kind yeah. the visitors were to him. 
Right. We interviewed him, and, and he we said, Travis, did they, did you get killed? Did you, were you dead? Because he was so injured from the, the beam hitting, hitting him. He got too close, and his beam hit him. And, you know, I won't give away that answer, but we, we addressed that on an interview. At one of the, he's, he's always at the IUFO conference, so uh, we did have him uh, on our we do like 15, no, we do half-hour segments at the IUFO Congress. We had a little bit of time with him briefly and Jennifer's side. He's a, a fascinating person, and I hope he brings his guitar because at night, if oh. there's any free time, and Travis will I will, go out I will make sure he guitar. does. I will email and make sure he does. I didn't know hmm. that. Now, he, and I think what's, what's uh, different about his story is he was missing for four days. Yes. You know, which there's, a, you know, a lot of people say they lost a few hours or, or whatever, but um, it, it just was such an incredible amount of time. Oh, and do ask Richard Dolan to bring his harmonica. He was on um, okay. Packing for Mars. Packing for oh Mars. And he's playing his harmonica in this movie. <gasps> That's another movie maybe you get for next year called Packing for Mars. It's just wonderful. So he's, he's playing his <laughs> harmonica, and he was really, really good. So uh, oh under most plays music, we can have the yeah. um, Disclosure Project Band. <laughs> so, anyway. <laughs> right, right. So, anyway, um, I don't know what else I can tell you about um, Alien Cosmic Expo. One thing is with the accommodations, uh, Brantford has a 250-acre campground. And so if you wanted to, it's un, it, we have all the information under uh, accommodations. Now, it's being held at the uh, Best Western Plus Brant Park Inn in Brantford, Ontario. But under that, um, we have all the information about other hotels, but also the Grand River Conservation Area, Brant Park. And, um, you know, if if you're, um, plan, you know, if you travel around in an RV and you want to come up to Brantford and, and uh, camp for um, a few days while you're attending the uh, ACE weekend, uh, that's available as well. Well, that's awesome. So there's still the room at the hotel. The tickets are on sale now. Get them at a discount. And come on up. Um, I'm yes. talking to my brother and sister, and hopefully they're going to drive up and see this. They haven't seen well, my uh, family in years because <laughs> yeah. we had to disconnect because I was a, a contact the experiencer. And if they were to come up to this conference, we would uh, be coming full circle as a family with our disconnecting reunion. So I'm working oh on that. Goodness. One of the techniques that would be that wonderful. I, they're, they're in Pittsburgh, so it's not that far away. Oh, it's not that far. And let me tell you, for our American friends, because of the Canadian U.S. dollar right now, you get an even further discount because um, – it, it's a it's about a dollar forty night right now I think I'll I'll just look it up online. Um, mm-hmm. I'll put Canada U S exchange rate. Here we go. Today, one Canadian dollar equals seventy eight cents U S dollar. So oh. your U S dollar is going to go a lot farther. Mm-hmm. Here in Canada. Wow. Yeah, there's a there's uh, over, gonna, like it. That's wonderful. It's about a twenty-one cent difference. So your your dollar is going to go a lot farther in in uh, Canada with the exchange rate the way it is right now. So you get even more discount. Wonderful. Doctor Les wants to say something. Uh, yeah, I find yeah. it uh, really useful if uh, you have had uh, you're an experiencer and. Uh, a sibling or a parent or somebody close to you, a uh, husband or wife, has had an experience. If you were to both come together uh, and you start to tell the story, you help each other and you fill in the story. So if you're coming as an experiencer and you have somebody who is in your family or somebody that you know that uh, has had an experience with you and you can get them to come too, it's, it's worth twice as much. <laughs> oh, forgot to disconnect the phone. Um, so, and also, you don't need a passport to get over the border, correct? 
Oh, you do. You you have to have a oh, passport. Oh, you do? Yes. Oh, wow. Do you have a passport? Okay. I do, and we misplaced his, but I know we get it in 24 hours, so I better get yes. on that. <laughs> yes. No, bring your passport I, I um, to cross the border. Uh, yeah, they, they would like that. Uh, I think you can still fly in the United States just on your driver's license, but um, I think to cross the border you need to uh, have a passport. Oh, now, good. here's another thing. That. We're only about an hour from Niagara Falls as well. So if you, our American friends, have not seen Niagara Falls, come up and, and cross at the Peace Bridge um, or the Fort Erie Bridge. Is that the Peace Bridge? Uh, no, the, the Peace Bridge is a different one. Um, the, at the bridge at Fort Erie, and, and it's quite a bit closer to, um, and you'll just drive, you can see Niagara Falls on the way to Brantford. I took. Um, uh, for those of you who haven't seen it, it's one of the most beautiful sites ever. What's <laughs> ever. that? Niagara is. Niagara Falls. Ever. Oh, it's 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 um, it's staggering. You know, you go yeah. up and you hear that roar, and you go. <gasps> yeah, <laughs> imagine, it, it really is. People impressive. that went over the falls in a barrel. I mean, how did they go over a falls in a barrel? My goodness, yeah. <laughs> those people must be crazy. They fell yeah. over it. Yeah. yeah. So last year when I took <laughs> Leonard. Leonard Caston back to the airport in Buffalo. We we left early and we stopped in Niagara Falls and saw the falls and had lunch and and then I took him to the Buffalo airport to go home. Mhm. So it's oh, we very love close. Like, yeah, we um you know Niagara Falls is about an hour away from Brantford and and um then to, of course Toronto. Like so we're sort of a triangle that way. There's Brantford at the top mm-hmm. and then yeah, Niagara Falls and Toronto. So, um, yeah, we, we welcome all our American friends as well. Well, we're very excited about this event, and we are running out of time. Is there anything yeah. else um, we want to cover? I think we can conclu- we're going to conclude with the Alien Cosmic Expo c- commercial that uh, Joanne provided to us, and we're playing on Aquarium Radio and we are going to interview. Let me just go real quickly and just say the speakers are uh, Richard. Uh, you want to you want to say who they are because I might mispronounce things. Sure. If you just go, okay, just say everybody's name. So Richard so Surrett is, is the moderator line. of. Richard Surrett's going to be the moderator of the um, disclosure hearings. Now he often sits in and hosts coast to coast. And uh, mm-hmm. he's our Canadian, uh, moder- you know, radio personality moderator, and, and uh, we're so glad to have him. We have Stephen Bassett, Barry Strom, Paul Hellyer, Travis Walton, Elizabeth April. Oh, you, you, I think you're interviewing her on the 24th. She's amazing. Mm-hmm. Richard Dolan, Stanton Friedman, the granddaddy of them all. It's, he's mm-hmm. such a gentleman. Nick Pope, mm-hmm. Joanna Emery, Victor Vigiani, Sherry Wild, Jason Quitt. You will just love Jason, another young person who is, um, you know, one of those special children born that um, has so had so many experiences for such a young age. Bob Mitchell, wow. jo- Joanna L. Ross, Grant Cameron, Susan Collins, and then, of course, Janet and Sasha and uh, Stu Bundy, and Francois Bourbeau. And um, we still have two more people to come up. One is O.C., who is an experiencer, Mm -hmm. and when we'll be talking, uh, speaking on Sunday, and uh, uh, someone from the New York State MUFON. Um, So um, come on up and see all these wonderful people and and spend the weekend and mill around with the exhibitors and have fun. I know it's going to be lots of fun for everybody, and it's uh, going to awaken people to higher levels of consciousness. And what did you want to say, Sasha? Just the whole Lake Erie uh, area is a very, very high alien contact area. Uh, Yes, it is. uh, It has been for for a very long time. Michael Lee Hill, who's the uh, present embodiment of Enki, uh, one of the Anunnaki, uh, has been uh, 
logging sightings there, and there's a huge number of uh, people in the area that are of Iroquois descent who have this haploid group, which shows that they have a lot of alien genes in them. And this is the area. Well, that's it. Final word to you, Joanne, and then we're going to play the commercial and and the show, and we'll put it out there. We'll put it out on all of our Facebook and all the social networks, and get the word out far and wide. And thank you so much for coming well, on the show. Well, thank you. I thank you so much for having me, and enjoy all the speakers in the next uh, couple of weeks as as Janet and Sasha interview them, and then come up and see them in person. That sounds like a plan. Okay, much love and blessing, Dan. Aloha. All right. Aloha. Right back at you. Who are we to say? With all the planets and all the galaxies and all the solar systems, we're the only intelligent life form? We can't. And out of this world experience here on Earth, your eyes will be open to an exciting lineup of speakers, exhibitors, and copious aha moments. Experiencers, UFOs, extraterrestrials. Alien Cosmic Expo, June 24th to 26th at the Best Western Plus Brant Park Inn. Tickets at aliencosmicexpo.com. Have you heard? Metro by T-Mobile now includes Amazon Prime. Yes, enjoy the best of shopping and entertainment, movies, TV shows, music, free shipping, and much more. All included for just $40 per line for three lines. All on the T-Mobile network. Discover the smarter way. Metro by T-Mobile. That's genius. One offer per account. Offer subject to change. Twelve ninety nine per month value. Offer valid for new Amazon Prime members. Metro customers may notice reduced speeds versus some T-Mobile customers. Video at 480p. Capable device required. See store for details and terms and conditions.